tonight we are talking about our relationship that we ought to have with our employers in this series titled God Ordained Relationships. Welcome to New Dawn Ministries. TV. So before we can kick off tonight's lessons, I want us to pray, just to take a moment and pray for what is happening in Turkey and Syria. Um, as you, some of you might have known, um, those two nations were hit by a massive earthquake and there's a lot of turmoil, a lot of death, a lot of suffering. Um, I want us to pray for the mothers, the brothers, the children um, in those nations. I want us to pray for the help and the grace of God in these difficult times. Father, we thank you for we can always run to you as our refuge, as our strength, as our strong tower. Father, we pray for Turkey and Syria. We bring these two nations before you, O oh God. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your grace. We pray, Lord Jesus, that there will be help those who are cold, who are hungry, those who are trapped in the rebels without um, a hope of coming out. Father, we pray for your help. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they will be supernaturally be extracted out of those rebels. Um, and those who are just crying and moaning for the loss of their loved ones, we pray for the spirit of comfort upon them in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory, O oh God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Um, let's continue to pray for those nations um, in your prayer times. Put them in your prayers. Let's bring them before God. Now tonight we are talking about the relationship that we ought to have with our employers or our bosses. To kick off this discussion, um, I couldn't uh, think about any other verse other than the verse in the book of Nehemiah. And I want us to quickly go to Nehemiah chapter 2. We'll be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 4. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artixis, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been set in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad? Since you are not sick, this is nothing but the sorrow of the heart. So I became dreadful, I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be set when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Hallelujah. So, such a profound story and I love this story because this story relates to most of us. Here's Nehemiah. He is employed to be a king's cup bearer. So he earns a living by serving the king, essentially. At the end of the month, he gets his uh, paycheck. He goes home. He takes care of his family. But he knows that in the next day, he needs to go back into the courts and serve his king. But he's been serving his king faithfully. And all of a sudden, he receives news about Jerusalem and he hears that the walls have collapsed, the gates have been burned down. And those news, they really grab him and he receives what we call a burden. But now, in his mind, he's thinking, I've got a family that I need to take care of and I'm employed. So I cannot resign and just go and fulfill the burden that I'm experiencing. So in the morning he goes, but what I like about him, he faithfully still serves the king until the king took notice that, listen man, he says to Nehemiah, I see that your face is downcast. Usually when you come to my presence, you are so jolly. He says to him, but what I see on you, I see the sorrow of the heart. In other words, um, there's something that is bothering you. And it is true. And, and this story of Nehemiah relates to most of us. We work for our bosses. We wake up in the morning. We go to work. We work hard. We come back home. We are so tired. 
However, there are certain things that bothers us in our hearts that are not related to our work. And the things that bothers us in our hearts is actually the calling or the purpose that God has for you. But there's always this turmoil, should I, should I leave my job and go and fulfill what God has called me to do? But if I do that, I run the risk that I might not get you know, enough funds to take care of my family. Or do I just persevere into what I am doing um, in terms of you know, rendering your service to your employer? But what I want you to focus on is that it was the king who took notice that there was something that is bothering Nehemiah. And God always sees that as much as we are employed, there are certain burdens that he himself has given all of us. And all these burdens, we ought to fulfill them because that's what God has created us to do. But what will be most important is that even if you have a burden outside your employer, it's still important that you honor, you respect, and you relate very well with your boss. Never undermine your boss. Never feel that your boss is a punishment to you because um, what you're doing, the service that you're giving him or her is not related to the purpose and the plans that God has given you. God still expects you and I to still fulfill our obligations and duties in serving our bosses. And let me say this, you might be working out there and whatever you are working on is got nothing to do with what God has called you. You might feel that there's a higher calling. You might feel that there's something so important that you need to be doing. But even if you are feeling like that, that is never an excuse to undermine and underperform in working for your earthly boss. And what I like about the story of Nehemiah is actually verse 4. In verse 4, it says here, Then the king said to me, What do you request? I love this. Because what this means, it means that the king has such a great relationship with Nehemiah that he couldn't stand to see his sad face to a point whereby the king was driven to a point whereby he said, Listen, Nehemiah, what is it that you need? And Nehemiah then had to now um, um, give a, 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 a request to the king to say, King, I need to go to my hometown. I need to take care of my home. I need to see, uh, I need to rebuild the walls and the ruins. Um, I need to restore the gates and the walls that have been um, um, uh, ruined. And the king blesses Nehemiah and Nehemiah goes. And when I read this, I felt that God looks at the faithful employees who are faithful to their employer and God chooses them as those who are uh, worthy and fit to serve the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Because the words of the king here represented the words of God. It's the same thing as uh, Moses. Moses also served his father-in-law, Jethro. And for 40 years, he's been serving there. Because he was so faithful in serving his father-in-law, the eyes of God were attracted to Moses. And God went to Moses and said, you know what, I want to call you out to become a liberator of a nation. Hallelujah. And I love this. So it means when God wants to use us, he goes into the corridors of the employers. And he goes there and he looks for a soul that will be faithful in saving him. Hallelujah. I want you to go to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to verse 24, quickly. And it says here, slaves. Now, of course, it says slaves. But what I want you to take from here is that um, we can replace that word slave with employees. It says, slaves, obey your earthly masters. Obey your bosses in everything and do it not only when their eyes is on you and do and to carry their favor but with sincere of heart and reverence to the Lord whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward it is the Lord Christ you are saving. Hallelujah. So Paul is encouraging 
um, the church in Colossia and he's telling them that the slaves ought to honor their earthly bosses. And these earthly bosses were not born again. But he was saying that serve them as if you're serving Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he was saying to them, don't buy their face. In other words, don't pretend to be working when they are looking at you. But when they are not looking at you, you're not doing, you're not honoring them. And he says, because if you do that, if you work for them sincerely, you will receive a reward that comes from the Lord. Because God will look at how are you serving the current boss that you, you, he has given you. As unborn again as they are, how faithful are you in serving them? Because it is that faithfulness in serving those earthly bosses that will unlock and open doors for you, for God to elevate you into a position where he can use you to serve for his purpose. Hallelujah. So God is always interested, even Jesus Christ himself, for the first 30 years of his life, he worked faithfully for his earthly boss, which was his earthly father, uh, Joseph. He was a carpenter and he was working faithfully for him up to a point where by now he had to change roles because of his faithfulness and God now used him in the ministry that he came here for. So if you want God to use you in your purpose, take a particular attention in the relationship you currently have with your earthly boss. Always honor them, always deliver, always work hard, not only when they are looking at you, even if when they are not looking at you, serve them and honor them because God is looking at the attitude of your heart. And it is that attitude of the heart that you have towards your earthly bosses that will accelerate your promotion into the next level. You will be like Moses who was um, upgraded from becoming a shepherd of a sheep to becoming a liberator of a nation. You will be like David who took care of the sheep and was promoted to take care of a nation. I hope this has blessed you as much as it has blessed me and it has also challenged me as well. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we, you are calling all of us to work faithfully and diligently to our earthly bosses. And to I pray, God, that you give us that wisdom and the diligence that we will work so hard as if we are working for you. For even if they are earthly, but you are still expecting us to serve them as it if we are serving you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's meet again next week, Tuesday at 6 p.m. May God bless you.